Hello again. We've been talking about cryptography. Now we're going to start a new topic, which is cryptographic protocols, which are very important on the Internet. Okay, so let's introduce this by doing a little thought experiment. You've seen a few of those along the way. So consider the following scenario. You have some friend who lives in a foreign repressive country where the uh, police intercept the mail and they open it and, you know, so, but you have this thing that you want to send to your friend, you know, some valuable artifact. Uh, so you can't just send it through the mail or the police will, you know, intercept your, your, your package and open it. Um, and you have this strong box that you can put it in and send it to him, you know, lock it up. But the problem is that your friend doesn't have a key to any lock that you have. So the question is, how do you get it to him securely so that the police can't intercept it and, you know, mess with your artifact, okay? So here's what you might do. So imagine that you take this artifact, put it in your strong box, and put a lock on it, and you send it to your friend. Um, then what he does is attaches another lock, you know, assuming that the hasp is big enough where you can have two locks on there, sends it back to you, right? And so it's both, both transmittals have been secure so far because they've been locked. And then you remove your lock because you have a key for it, you send it back to your friend, then he removes his lock and extracts the item, right? Sounds pretty good, right? So you might consider this to be a protocol, and all a protocol really is is a structured dialogue, sending messages or, or entities back and forth in such a way to accomplish some communication-related goal. Well, what is the goal in this case? Well, the goal is, of course, to send the, con the content, in this case the artifact, confidentially in the context of a hostile or untrustworthy environment when the two parties don't share a key. If this sounds familiar, it's because it's similar to stuff we've talked about before. And this is exactly the kind of thing that you might want to accomplish online. Okay, so in, in, a, in effect, you could um, implement the same protocol uh, where what you're doing is sending messages across the internet. And so the valuable thing that you're sending is, you know, some secret content that you want to include in the message. And the locks in this case are the applications of, of some uh, encryption uh, to prevent the eavesdropper or the police or whoever from getting a hold of, of this valuable content. Okay, so, but if we take uh, our, our protocol with strong boxes and transmute it, I guess you could say, exactly uh, into an encryption context, there's a problem. Uh, and I wonder if you can see what it is. Well, here's the problem. An encryption algorithm uh, applied to a text uh, is like a strong box in a sense. But remember that our, that our protocol required applying two levels of encryption or, you know, putting two different locks on there. So imagine that if instead of putting another lock on the strong box that we sent, what Ivan had done is put our strong box inside a bigger strong box and put a lock on that and send it back to us. Well, we would have been out of luck, right? Because we, we would have had no way to take the next step in the protocol, which was to reach inside his box and take our lock off. Okay, so uh, that's gonna be the problem if we're applying encryption algorithms because now we've got an encrypted chunk of, of information and another encryption outside that, but how can we reach inside the outer encryption to take the inner encryption off? Most encryption algorithms don't allow us to do that at all. We would need an encryption algorithm which commutes in the sense that we can do the encryptions uh, in either order and with the same result. Okay, so we have actually seen an encryption algorithm that would allow us to do that and that is by XORing to a random string. You remember, that's how a one-time path worked. Okay, so let's, let's imagine that our protocol then looks like this. So uh, A and B are the two parties who want to communicate, and each of them generates a random string which is just as long as the original message. So then our protocol looks like this. A sends to B the following message. M XORed with his uh, random string, we'll call that case of A, when, when B gets that message, he XORs it with his random string, case of B, and sends that back to A. Remember, this is just exactly the analog of the strong boxes. 
And then A XORs that message, the message that he receives, with his random string again. And because of the properties of XOR, the KAs cancel out. So that the message he's actually sending back to B is M XORed with K sub B. And then um, B can XOR it once again with K sub B and extract M. Sounds great, right? Well, this, you might think, is effectively the one-time pad, and so should be pretty strong encryption algorithm. The problem is there's a good reason why you call the one-time pad one time, and that is if you use an, the encryption method with the key several times, then you immediately lose all of the uh, strength of the one-time pad. Okay, so the problem with this, with this protocol is that an eavesdropper who collects all three of these messages is able to extract not only M, but K and K sub B just by XORing these messages together. Because anytime you see uh, a value being XORed in there, if you see it twice, then it cancels out. Okay, And so this really is a very bad protocol, even though at first blush it appears like it might be a pretty good one. Okay. So what have we said? Well, we said that cryptographic protocols are just message exchanges that are, that are designed to accomplish some security-related function. Um, they're very important on the internet. Almost everything that we do on the internet is some protocol, and many times it has a security-related functionality, and so we want to add encryption to accomplish that. Um, however, cryptographic protocols are very easy to get wrong, very difficult to design correctly, and uh, over the next few lectures, we'll be talking about, you know, some famous protocols and flaws in them. Thanks.